Hello everyone, this is Josh from Forward Ag, and here's our video on the KC6000. It is a toe-between liquid fertilizer caddy with a capacity of 6,000 US gallons. That rounds out to about 22,700-ish uh, liters. Um, it can be used as a tow behind but it is not recommended. And it is also not recommended to be used with three-point hitch tractors, but this is our tractor, it's a personal tractor, uh, and it's all we have on this farm. Throughout the course of this video, I will show you all of the features that are included with the KC6000, as well as what we have planned for the future of this implement, as it's not entirely done yet, but we'll talk about that more later on. Along with that, I will include a table of contents and timestamps for information on how to add liquid fertilizer compatibility to any air cart, air drill, and cultivator. You can also add it to planters if they don't already have it, but most planters in-game can be used with liquid fertilizer already. If you aren't into editing or modding of any kind and you're really not interested in doing so, don't worry, I will include our edited Seed Hawk 980 and 84 foot drill in the file so that you can just jump right in and use it right off the bat. Before we check out the caddy out here, we're going to head into the store and see what kind of options and configurations we have in there. So you're going to go ahead and open it up, go to Tools, Crop Protection, and scroll all the way over until you get to the KC6000. We have six different color configurations. We have the tanks which are going to be a bright white shiny plastic, forward sea foam blue, I apologize for my shaders, they make it a little bit bright, forward steel teal, and forward desert tan. This is personally my favorite color. For rim colors, we have all of the standard colors. Main colors as well, we have all of the standard colors, but with a couple additions, we have the forward cinder, which is a more of like an onyx, close to the agco color, but a little bit brighter. And then we have forward dust tan, which is a very, very light tan color. Um, again, outside of the store with the shaders, it does look a little bit darker out there. And then we have our toolbox here up in front that has all the standard colors. That way you can color match it with any brand that you'd like to use. Then we have our fill hose, which we have forward green and forward orange. Those are just our specific green and orange colors for our hoses, but you can change them to any standard color that you would like. Totally up to you. Same thing goes for the pump hose, forward orange and forward green, along with the standard colors. Next up, we have our wheel configurations. We start off with Firestone 650-85R38s. We head over to Michelin. We have 580-85R42s, 650-85R38s, and 1050-50R32s. Head over to Midas. We have the 1250-50R32s. And then Trellborg, we have 580-70R42s as well as 865R32s. And then we'll head over to Goodyear. We have the 1430R46s. And then finally, we have the Forward Agricultural FFT 36 inch track system. You will notice that the rim color does affect the rim color of the tracks as well. Just a little something we want to toss in there so you can have it be a little more personalized. The working speed option is not a part of the caddy. That's actually a separate mod, but it can be found on the in-game mod hub if you are a PC player. But we'll go over to design, that's going to be your decal designs. We have our standard, which is the forward blue steel all the way around. We have red decals, which is just simply red all the way around. And then plain decals, which is white on the frame and black on the tanks, so they show up nice and visible. We'll head down to manure system, and this just configures your manure system option on or off. Uh, if you're not a fan of using it, it will unload and load perfectly fine without it, not a worry. Then we go to beacon lights, we have no beacons, standard bulb beacons and strobe lights, which are just small strobe bars on the bottom there. They work fantastic. And then we'll go to our front hitch option, which is all the way up here. And we have front low, medium, and high. And that's just, if your tractor has a higher hitch, you can set it to this, medium and low, totally up to you. And then we'll head over to the rear hitch back here. We have rear low and rear high, just depending on the height of the hitch from your cultivator, planter, or air drill. We'll go down to flags. And this is, uh, <laughs> this is really where I kind of went a little nuts on the configurations. Um, and that's only because it's I've just never seen that many flag options before. And I was really happy with these. So we're going to go through them all. We have left UK, right UK, and both. And this is going to be for every flag that I have included. So we have a left, right, and both. And then we have some miscellaneous ones. So we have USA and then Canada and Brazil, Australia, Germany, 
And then we have a mix. So we have UK and USA, Canada, Brazil, Australia, and Germany, and then USA, UK, Canada, and so on. It just goes all the way through each flag. That way you can have a mixture of them or a dual or single completely up to you. I just wanted to have a lot of options. Um, they are on their own brackets um, that are very similar to the light bracket that I have up here for the motor. And I'll show you a little bit about that light there in just a second. So I got our F1 menu going up here. We're going to check out some configurations and options we have outside of the store. We have our tanker trailer set up with the fertilizer hose connected. And we're just going to connect it to this very top outlet right there. And we'll check out what it does. Grab this here. Connect it on to, and you see that the valve cap drops hanging by the chain, and all of the valve handles rotate appropriately. Along with that, we have our auto shutoff switch. Uh, that turns all the way to the right, indicating that it is on, and when the capacity is full, it will rotate off as well as everything's detached. So we'll detach this here, and I can try and see if I can get this all in frame. And everything goes back to normal. So we've reconnected our hose here so that we can check out the hydraulic pump as it is. And we have this set to about 106 liters per second, um, just to speed things up a little bit. This is also a 13 horsepower motor, so it should be on the quicker side. And uh, we do have our F1 options for um, mouse users. They tend to switch back and forth when I'm using the mouse and the controller, so I do apologize for that. But we can press R, and that will start your pump. I do have it using gallons right now, but if you have liters, uh, of course, you'll see a little bit different of a number set there. Now, if we simply change the direction of our pump and press the same button to activate the motor, it will empty it back on out completely fine. Um, do note that if your trailer also has a pump motor, this may get a little bit finicky because you will, you'll be trying to use the trailer's pump motor and the caddy's pump motor at the same time and uh, sometimes it does tend to run into issues, so just be aware of that. So we've fast forwarded into nighttime so we can check out some of the lighting options. We'll go ahead and turn on our standard lights here, and as you can see, we have the working rear lights and side lights all the way around. And then we have our front motor light. Now the front motor light will be controlled two different ways depending on what you're using. If you're using a mouse, it's gonna be the right and left mouse button, and you'll simply scroll back and forth. So we'll do that here, right and left and scroll back and forth, and you can see it turn and move back and forth there. And then, if you're like me, shut off course play. <laughs> if you're like me and use an Xbox controller, you'll hold R1 and L1, and just move your right analog stick back and forth. And that's just for some additional visibility when you're out in the field or you know, starting up early in the morning in the yard and need to connect the fertilizer hose and be able to see. Um, it does provide some pretty darn good visibility up here. We're back in the tractor here. We're gonna go ahead and check out the rear signals. So we have our left and our right. And if we press two on the keypad, we have our hazard lights here. And then on this current caddy, we have the strobe lights configured. Um, the beacon lights are standard. They work just as your tractor's lights will. So we'll go ahead and start those on up. They are yellow and white. That way they're not uh, too bright. They're a little bit dimmed down with the yellow. When it comes to the front hitch stand, um, that will also be controlled two different ways, just like the motor light. Uh, on Xbox, we're going to hold R1 and just use our right analog stick up and down. And uh, I set it up this way just so you can have a configurational hitch stand height of your own liking. You know, if you're on a steep terrain or tall terrain or uneven, or if you want to put a board under there for role play or whatever you really want to do, you can go ahead and do that. Um, or like tractor height or hitch height. A bunch of variables went into it. and and uh, which is why I came to the decision to work it with hydraulics. So I had a few people ask me, well, why did you make the toolbox color configurational? Just for fun? And yeah, at first it was, but then I figured, why not make it work? So we'll head over to the toolbox. If you're on your Xbox controller, left analog stick, click it in, opens it up. On your keyboard, it's gonna be the R button. That opens that up. And you'll press M, and that'll open up the menu. And you can head in, repair, sell, whatever you need to do right on the go from your KC6000 liquid caddy. I'm gonna head over to the 3320 and just connect our class five hitch. See it drop down in there with our cross pin to hold everything down. And our hydraulic hoses connect perfectly fine. Uh, each cap is configured with each hose. So if you connect five hoses, five caps will open, six hoses, six caps will open, and so on. 
Uh, at the moment, we still do only have six hoses to connect to, simply because we have a future project that we're going to implement with this, um, and we will add those additional two hoses in the future, along with our product hose and electrical outlet. Um, they will be thrown on there as well. All right, now let's start off our modding portion of this video. Um, and I say modding loosely because this doesn't really require a whole, a whole lot of knowledge to get done. It's just some very simple lines that you're going to add to each XML um, other than the cultivator. The cultivator is where it gets a little bit in depth, but I'm going to run you through it and you'll be able to uh, get it done on your own. First things first, we're going to start off with the air drills because they're the easiest. I have the John Deere 1870 air drill here. This is already extracted to my desktop and ready to go. If you have not done that yet, simply take your zipped folder, right click that folder and click extract and send it wherever you'd like. I typically just send it to the desktop. We're going to open this up here, find our XML file, right click, edit with Notepad++. If you do not have Notepad++, I would highly suggest it. It is a whole lot easier to deal with XML files in comparison to regular Notepad and it's free to download. So we're going to open this up here and you will see the entirety of your XML file. We're going to click Control F and search for the full word fill unit and click find next. Once you've found that, you will see these two fill units here. We have seeds and fertilizer. I want you to just click on this here next to fertilizer space and type in one full word liquid fertilizer. After that, save. Once you've saved it, you'll want to take all of the files, right click, send it to compressed zip folder. And once it's done doing that, you'll want to name it the exact name you had it before. Or what I usually tend to do is tape the exact name, except I add um, underscore NH3 for anhydrous, or I add um, just LF for liquid fertilizer, whatever you'd like to indicate that it is the different, um, different implement that has liquid fertilizer added to it. Next up will be the air cart. This is where it gets a little bit trickier, but honestly, it's still pretty darn easy. You're only adding a few things to the XML and a few things to the mod description. And I will have all of this laid out in the file as well. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to sort of copy and paste and then, you know, move things around where they need to be. So we're just going to go ahead and open up our file here and look for the air cart XML. For this specific file, it's the 3380. It also includes the case IH 40 foot and 60 foot air drill in it. We're going to ignore those. We've already worked on the drill. We're going to open up the XML with Notepad++. And we're also going to open up the mod description with Notepad++. Now for this, like I said, it's a little bit trickier, but not too bad. I do have some notes, like I said, that I will include to make your life a little bit easier for this here. So we're going to look for air cart. Now, we have this portion that we're going to add to the mod description and this portion that we're going to add to the XML, plus a couple other things that I'm really, you know, you really can't copy and paste, but I will show you how to do them here. So in the notes, we're going to take this line here, copy that there. We're going to look for fill unit. And we have found our fill units here. I've already added this in here, but it's exactly what's in the notes. So you'll literally just have to copy and paste it. And this is just going to give you your configurations for the grain tank having seed and fert, and then the grain tank having only seed. That way you can use liquid fertilizer. If you do not add this and you only have seed and fert on your air cart, when you go to use it, it'll work with a worker, but not with course play. And I know a lot of you like to use course play. Next up, we'll scroll right down from that and we'll go to fill units where you will find your fill unit configurations. Each configuration is as it sounds. It means it can hold seeds and fertilizer in this configuration. But what we're going to do is go from configuration here to configuration here and just copy all of this. Control C. We're going to enter, enter, and then paste. Now we have two configurations. Uh, I will typically add a tag bracket, the green bracket, just like this one. Um, but for now, we'll just kind of leave that alone. So what you'll want to do with this new configuration is look for the fertilizer portion, which is right here. It starts off here to here, fill a unit to fill unit. We'll want to take this fill unit, select it all, delete. And we're just going to bring this back all the way to here. That way everything's closed up nice and evenly. And then for the seeds, since it's only seeds, we'll want to combine these two numbers here. So that would be 14, 720. 
That way, when you go in-game, you'll be able to have your configurations of seed and fert, or only seed, seed and fert, and only seed. You'll want to save that up, and that portion's done. Then we're going to head over to the mod description, and I will have this portion in the notes, but all you're going to have to add is your 110 end section here, and that is simply going to be the grain tank configurations for seed, fert, and only seed, as we did in the XML. This is just to state in the store which each does. Now these numbers can be edited whatever you'd like. They can be edited in the XML or whatever you'd like. It is totally up to you, but I simply just match each configuration from the XML to the mod description. So I did 10, 120, 4600, and then we did 14, 720. Once you're done with that, as you did with the air drill, you want to select all of the files in the folder, send them to a zipped folder, rename it to whatever you'd like, again, to indicate liquid fertilizer or not, totally up to you, and that's that. Last but not least is cultivators. This one, right off the bat, seems like the most difficult, but if you follow this video step by step, it should be pretty darn easy. So we're gonna open up our folder here and look for our XML, open that up. To begin, we'll wanna take our vehicle type and just edit this from cultivator to fertilizing cultivator. That's just gonna tell the game that this cultivator can also process fertilizer. Now this specific cultivator has vehicle type options, so I've already added some tags in here to find those quickly. Um, if your cultivator does not have that, you do not need to edit any of this. But simply all I did in these configurations was change, again, the vehicle type right here from cultivator, just like so, this here, to fertilizing cultivator. And I did that for all of them, just so it recognizes the vehicle type that we set up top. For the next portion of the XML file, we want to click Control F and look for I3D mappings. The M does need to be uppercased. Find Next, and you'll be at the top portion of the mapping section. This is where I like to add all of the new things into the XML so I know exactly where I put them. All three of these new sections will be included in the notes file, so you can simply copy and paste right into the XML, and all you're really going to have to edit is the working width, and I would simply scale that to the existing working width of the cultivator that you're using. The Tiger Mate 255 is 60 foot slash 18.2 meters, so that's what I set it to. For the work areas section, I've left it for last as it can be the most difficult due to repetitiveness. All you're really going to do is be copy and pasting here, but it can get a little tricky on the eyes, especially with all these red, purple, and blue lines going around. Stay with me. For most cultivators, you're going to only have one work area. Some, like the 255, have two for each side of the cultivator, and you will see that indicated here by one and two. Each of these have one and two, so this would be for your left and this would be for your right side of the cultivator. To add the sprayer function down here below, which I've already added, all you're going to do is copy from work area to work area to work area to work area, these two sections here, and you're going to paste them beneath, and it will be in this area. Then you're going to change cultivator to sprayer for both, process cultivator area to process sprayer area for both, and then you're going to add in this same tag, disable backwards false, requires ground contact true, and then the rest of it is the same. For me personally, since everything in this file is I3D mapped, I went along and did the same thing. So for the start, width, and height nodes for each, I simply mimicked the work area start, work area width, and work area height, except I did start spray, width spray, and height spray, one and two. Very simple, just adding spray into the existing words as we have above. Now, since all of this is I3D mapped, I know that work area start is where I can find the location of the rest of the indicated nodes here that are already written down. So start one, width one, height one, etc. So what I'll do is I'll double click and copy this, control F and paste, and we can find that down in the I3D maps. And what I did was I took from the work area start one all the way down to work area height two, copy, and I pasted it in this section here, and then we added our work area start spray, width, height, for one and two. 
So we simply took the stuff we wrote down up in the top portion of the XML and pasted it right here. So we have our normal nodes and then we have our spray nodes. Now, if you have these nodes going from one to six, you would know that these nodes are going to need to be from seven to 12 because we have six and six. So you're simply copying this, pasting it here, changing it to spray and making it from one through six to seven through 12. Again, this might vary due to how many nodes your specific cultivator has, but this is specific to the 255. Once you're done with that, you're gonna to wanna to save the file and exit it on out, then open your folder back up and then head on in to the TigerMate 255 i3d file, which will open it in Giants Editor. Once we are in our i3d file, we're gonna go ahead and look for the main component, open that up and we'll open up the visual component and we'll look for the work areas node. We know from the i3d mapping that we have all six of these nodes here already included. All we're going to do is press down shift from the first one and select them all and then control D to duplicate. And these duplicated nodes are what we're going to use for the spray nodes. Next up, all we have to do is take these new nodes that we've duplicated and simply add spray to them. So we have work area start, and we just type in spray. And we do that for the rest of them. Now that we've added the word spray to all of our new nodes from start to height from one to two, you'll notice that the nodes will match up with the nodes that you added to the I3D mapping section of the XML. So work area start spray one was 0057, and that's what it is here. And then all the way down to work area height spray two, which is 00512, which is exactly what it was in the XML. You don't have to I3D map things, but when it comes down to it, it makes life a whole lot easier. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go to file, save, and we can exit that on out. We can head back to our file folder, select all, send to compress zip folder. And then as we did with the previous two implements, you're gonna rename it whatever you'd like. You can name it the same with liquid or something totally different. It's completely up to you. That's gonna be all for the modding section of this video. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or shoot us a message on Facebook. We'll be glad to help you out. Let's get into some flybys of the KC6000 in action.